Owning your own dinosaur theme park. It is something we all dream about when we are little. And with technologies having skyrocketed over the years, finally, it became a reality. People have tried to create this in the past. And failed every time. Despite the death and carnage, parks have been reopened again and again. But now, it was the time for Kanoa and his team of scientists to go at it. Kanoa signed a contract giving him access to a large island near Costa Rica. The island was thick with its jungles, rivers and lakes. The point of entrance for the future Jurassic World had already been made. Visitors would arrive by monorail and then descend towards the park's entrance to be greeted by the sight of dinosaurs. But for the moment, there was nothing but green. This needed to change, and thus Kunoa hired workers to deforest the area to make room for future park attractions and dinosaurs. Greenpeace would not be happy with the results, but new forests would be planted as these were necessary for the dinosaurs to live in a pleasant environment. But for the time being, the visitors were the most important issue and the first stores were built near the entrance. Kids are all about that merch, as they say nowadays, and this park would be no exception, as gifts and toy shops were the first things the customers would see. But these buildings, of course, would require power, and a large power station was built out of sight of the customers. This area would be also where the crew and facility staff would check in each day before heading to their stations. Through wiring, the buildings requiring power were connected to the station. Then it was finally time to start to think about dinosaurs as the first holding area was built. It was a relatively small pen and currently had some water for the dinosaurs to drink and would soon be covered with more trees to make the creatures feel at home. At the staff area, a separate cage was built where the incubated dinosaurs would be released before being transported to their associated area in the park. More shops and attractions were built at the main entrance. For his first investment, Kanoa started out small and secure, with some small herbivores which lived in packs together. He ordered his scientists to incubate five of them. Once the dinosaurs had been shifted to their cage, the park would be ready for business. And thus, the first dinosaur in the park, Dystrotheomimus, saw the light of day. It had a friendly and curious character. As they were released in the environment, soon after, they were sedated to be made ready for transport. By a helicopter, they were carefully moved to avoid injuring the animal. The first of the dinosaurs had already been moved as more came in. They were a bit jittery first, but calmed down once they started to explore their pen. They quickly fell at home as more of their same species were flown in. And with the news of the first dinosaurs having arrived, the first of the customers also made their way to the park. News spread fast of the creation of dinosaurs on this island, and even though there currently was only one species to be seen, many stood in line to get but a glimpse of the ancient beings. Besides seeing the dinosaurs, there was a lot more to do in the park, like bowling, fossil gathering, or playing a game or two at the arcade. But Kanoa knew he quickly needed to entertain his customers with more assets, and thus he ordered the incubation of two more dinosaurs, this time 
a Triceratops, and an Ankylosaurus. Their pen had already been built, providing wider access for customers to roam around. One of the Stratheomimus had become sick, and a ranger team was quickly sent in to respond to the emergency. They headed into the sealed off area and tranquilized the creature before applying the medicine. The fact that they did this so quickly avoided the spreading of the disease to fellow dinosaurs. And then the Triceratops, Kanoa's favorite dinosaur since he was a little boy, got welcomed to the park as well as it sniffed in the fresh air. Before being moved once again, he had to be put down temporarily, as the transportation helicopter was already inbound to tangle the creature up. It was a rare sight for people to behold. A gigantic beast like a Triceratops to be flown through the air like that. As the Triceratops was transported, the Ankylosaurus was also ready to be let loose. The Stratheomimus looked with curious eyes as they saw their new neighbor being slowly lifted down into the pen. The sedation made the creatures thirsty, and the Triceratops quickly headed for a drink before taking a stroll to get to know his new environment better. The sight of some yummy leaves made him calm and accustomed to his space. The guests were in awe to see this gigantic herbivore. And the Triceratops would soon not be alone anymore, as the Ankylosaurus was already being flown in. Both creatures did not require to live in a herd but still appreciated being in the company of other dinosaurs. The Triceratops more so than the Ankylosaurus, as the latter one did have a bit more of a cranky personality. The Ankylosaurus could get annoyed by too much dino activity around it, but with just the Triceratops being around, it was perfect. Guests could enjoy the two new additions from the viewing spaces provided. The sight of the dangerous looking but gentle herbivores made the guest list skyrocket. But Kanoa knew it was only a matter of time before the clients wanted to see something more thrilling. Something with sharp teeth. As the park was still too small to deal with some of the bigger predators, Kanoa announced publicly that it would welcome its first carnivore soon. The Dilophosaurus was a creature small of stature but vicious in nature. It would still take time for it to be incubated, and in the meantime, the guests enjoyed more of the park's facilities and the magnificent creatures. All staff was on high alert when the Dilophosaurus got released. Though it was small, it could do a lot of damage if not handled right. The other dinosaurs also seemed to notice a change in the air as the carnivore was being shipped closer to their area. The Dilophosaurus, despite its size, was a hunter that preferred to be alone. Nevertheless, it required a large amount of dense forests to feel at home and stay in the shadows before lashing out at its prey. Some extra plants and trees were planted to make the new addition feel more at home. The news of the carnivore was the latest trend on everyone's mind, and all the customers really wanted to see was some blood. For a creature so tiny, the Dilophosaurus was the park's biggest attraction, and once the people got a glimpse, she quickly headed back into the forest.
the park was doing great financially and critically, and was now ready to welcome some bigger additions to the dinosaur family. Kanoa's dinosaur theme park was doing great. With their latest addition of the Dilophosaurus, things went smoothly, and with the increased income, the park's next dinosaurs could be welcomed. Their pen would be right next to the Dilophosaurus to even out the areas in the park. At the end of the main entrance street, beyond all the arcades, bowling alleys, fast food change and merchandise, a grand hotel was built for guests to stay overnight. It would be luxurious, spare no expense. It would represent the park's early success and hopefully, in the future, the guests staying at the hotel could wake up looking out at several dinosaurs from their balcony. The next dinosaur to make its debut in the park was the Taurosaurus. Seemingly similar to the Triceratops to mainstream audience, but in fact were a lot smaller. Their smaller size meant that they were not able to fend for themselves as much as the Triceratops was able to do, and thus having at least two in the park was a must to let them feel safe. Right outside the hotel, more stores and facilities were being built to cater to everyone's need in a hand reach. And then the Taurosaurus was welcomed, its pattern being more colorful than its bigger sister the Triceratops, and due to its small size, this was a fan favorite amongst little children. The two new additions were put in their new home and they immediately started exploring. These creatures did not need a lot of forestry, as they saw this as a potential place for predators to loom. They felt most secure on the plain fields, where they could spot danger way ahead. But of course the older dinosaurs, both Triceratops and Ankylosaurus, still brought in many of the guests who started to appreciate the variety of dinosaurs this park had to offer. It was time to give those two veterans some new neighbors as well, and for the next upcoming dinosaurs, the biggest pack yet was planned. The Parasaurolophus was a kind herbivore giant that had no defense mechanism and thus relied on being in a large herd to feel at ease. Word spread fast on the street of the new animals being ready for the public soon, and then all five of them were released in the wild. The migration from the incubation pen to the actual pen was quite the undertaking, as only three transportation helicopters could be used at a time. Kanoa scientists hoped that the five new dinosaurs would bond just as well as the Struthiomimus did. As the final of the Parasaurs were being airlifted in, those who already arrived quenched their thirst and got to know their environment and fellow herd members better. The crowd loved seeing such a large herd of dinosaurs in plain view, but the downside to having a herd live close by was that a disease could spread rampant. One of the Parasaurs had contracted a sickness and the ranger team was quickly sent in to deal with the problem before the others could be influenced by it as well. And thus, the park continued to flourish, with guests traveling from afar to spend one or two days with family and friends at this theme park. The dinosaurs loved looking out at the people, with curiosity, and sometimes left out a friendly bark. And with each passing month, the park grew, mostly putting more dinosaurs around the centered hotel area. The latest additions in the park were more herbivores in the form of the Polycanthus, 
easily mistaken for the Ankylosaurus. Though not able to fend for himself, making it even more agitated to dinosaur contact than his bigger brother. And the Gallimimus, called by some bigger versions of the Struthiomimus. Much like the latter, these two needed to live in a bigger herd, and on the west side of the hotel, it became a nice crowded up joy of dinosaur entertainment. So many new additions to the park had really left the customer satisfied. Those who came during opening day returned to get a sighting of the latest attractions and were already fantasizing about what creatures would be next. Many felt the time was ripe to introduce another predator, and this time one that was bigger than the popular Dilophosaurus. Thus, the Ceratosaurus saw the light of day. It was the first dinosaur in the park somewhat resembling what everyone thought a T-Rex being, albeit smaller. It had a menacing look and the characteristic short front arms. But the horn on its nose was something the T-Rex did not possess. From newly built towers, the public could get the best view of the new predator. People queued up to get in the park and paid big money to witness the animal's feeding time as it was much more of a spectacle than the Dilophosaurus was. But because of its size, feeding was over in a matter of seconds. Yes, everything went according to plan. With the bigger creatures being introduced, security was upped as well, and the visitors felt safer than ever. Because of that, it was ready for phase 3, introduce the crowds to even bigger monsters. What could go wrong? The scientists were arguing on what giant to introduce next. Since the park would deal with a new size of dinosaur, Everyone agreed it would be smart to start with herbivores. Everyone shared the opinion to incubate the Stegosaurus, a majestic creature but difficult to hold and please. It required a lot of living space, but also a lot of the same species to live in that area. Though the Stegosaurus was huge and could defend itself with its tail spikes, its sides were open for an attack by predators, making living in a herd preferable. As five eggs were incubated, the transportation once again was kind of a hassle as the park staff did not want to agitate the animals since an escape by these would be awful. But the transportation went smoothly and people were excited as they heard about the park's biggest dinosaurs yet. The freshly introduced Ceratosaurus noticed that he got new neighbors and though these might seem delicious to her, the size of these herbivores made it to where they could kill a Ceratosaurus with one swing. The Stegosaurus attraction was immediately a hit. People could not believe how big these were as the ground shook while walking and exploring the newly received territory. Because of precautions, Kanoa scientists still stayed away from the larger predators and instead introduced the Matriacanthosaurus, similar in build to the Ceratosaurus, but bigger and leaner making it more ferocious. Its stripes made it seem like a beautiful dominant predator demanding respect from all who put their gaze upon it. Long queues formed in front of the watchtowers as the creature was towed and transported in. The park was now home to three different predators, the creatures that brought in most of the money and entertainment to the people. The Ceratosaurus and its latest addition did not need as much forestry as the Dilophosaurus, and so the people could get a good look at them even from the ground level near the fences. As many people could not witness feeding time for the earlier introduced hunters, this time the feeding for the Metriacanthosaurus was done right near the fence so that everyone could see who, by chance, would walk by the pen. But introducing carnivores of a larger size than the Dilophosaurus did prove to unravel new problems 
As defenses proved weaker in the middle and a slight opening had been created in the fence separating the Metriacanthosaurus and the Stegosaurus pen. It actually took a while for the hunter to notice the gap, but once she sensed it, she rushed right towards it, before hesitantly heading into unknown territory full of new smells and new creatures. The guests noticed this too and quickly informed the rangers and staff. A helicopter would be sent out immediately to put the Metriacanthosaurus down, but it seemed it would not make it in time before one of the Stegosaurus and the carnivore would meet face to face. The two giants stared each other in the eyes, knowing this was life or death. The meat eater used his deadly jaws and razor sharp teeth, and the plant eater returned the favor with his large spikes and long reach. Blood flew everywhere, and though some of the staff were worried, most of the public loved the display of power between the two. Kanoa's Jurassic World still was standing strong. Though they lost the Stegosaurus due to the breach last month, visitor numbers were higher than ever. The video of the two fighting dinosaurs was filmed by many and put on the internet, spiking the interests of thrill seekers hoping to see another malfunction that would result in two giants fighting. The amount of dinosaurs present at the park had increased greatly and easily was enough for people to spend an entire day of just watching the magnificent creatures. But the park had to evolve, and Kunoa readied his crew up for their most ambitious project yet. They had created the biggest pen in all of the park to welcome the largest type of dinosaurs, the long-necked herbivores. Shops and stalls were instated long beforehand to create a hype amongst the people. From afar, visitors would already get a glimpse of these colossal titans. The pen would be mixed. On one hand, it would contain the Brachiosaurus, mighty and stout, but difficult to please as its living conditions were quite strict, and the Diplodocus, much more relaxed and pleasant as long as it had enough space for its huge mass. As the people waited for the long-necked newcomers to arrive, they enjoyed themselves by getting familiar with some of the many other species on the island. The park had so many different types and sizes to offer. From the Triceratops-esque three-horned dinosaurs, to the dangerous-looking carnivores on two legs, or the cute little ones socializing with each other and making funny noises to the kids. To the ones shaped weirdly, the one more fascinating than the other. Customer satisfaction and reviews had never been this high, and the shareholders expected numbers to surge even more once the new dinosaurs were presented. And then, the Diplodocus was finally left out of the incubation pen into the wild. Once again, transportation proved difficult. Due to its size, one trank dart was not enough to put it down, but luckily for the staff on the helicopter, the size of the creature made it easy to hit. And so the biggest creatures yet were transported through the air to their new home, which hopefully would be groomed to their liking. Because of their long neck, the conservative feeding mechanism would not work, and so a special installment was made to appease to the long necks of the creatures. And luckily for the park, the two Diplodocus really liked their pen and quickly grew accustomed to it. They socialized with each other and looked curious to the tiny humans staring in awe. The Diplodocus did not need much forestry, but more would have to be planted to appease the Brachiosaurus when it would arrive. One of the things that made the Diplodocus popular was its whip-like tail that it could use in defense to snap at predators daring enough to attack such a large monster. The eating of the leaves was a popular sight as the customers could behold the herbivores in their true size with their necks high up in the air. Shortly after, the Brachiosaurus was set free as well and its small body and huge neck imposed an incredible image. 
Its silhouette against the sun reminded the staff of the reveal scene in the documentary revolving around the first Jurassic Park ever built. Of course, that park ended up never being opened due to the killing of five staff members. But Kanoa had the utmost confidence that this would never happen in his park. Though the Diplodocus really liked their new environment and enjoyed their freedom of movement, adjustments needed to be made to make the two new visitors feel welcome. Luckily, the Diplodocus were easier to adjust as well. The Brachiosaurus were a cranky bunch, but due to their long vertical necks, they needed a lot of trees surrounding them as they were not built as horizontally as the Diplodocus. It was the Brachiosaurus' neck and head that people could already spot as they entered the park at the main entrance. And so the park was incredibly happy with their latest additions. But Kanoa announced publicly that their ambitious project was not yet over. Even though they had mentioned earlier that in the largest pen they would welcome a mixed variety of long-necked herbivores, the creatures were big enough to where they could be put in the same pen with a carnivore without the threat of being attacked. It would be the park's first herbivore and carnivore mixed pen, and for this, the Baryonyx was chosen. The Baryonyx rose in popularity after the movie Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom was a box office hit despite very average reviews. Kanoa only liked the part on the island. The Baryonyx usually would eat fish, and due to the imposing size of the herbivores, they would not be or feel threatened by the inclusion of a carnivore. By adding the Baryonyx that was now set free, the large pen would create its own small ecosystem, probing the interest of many visitors. Precautions were made again, since the carnivores always demanded it, and the staff and the chopper made sure to put the beast down before he would be moved. And as expected, the Baryonyx were great with the other dinosaurs in the pen. More carnivores could not be added though, as that would incite in conflict for sure. But the customers loved the fact that amongst those giant plant eaters, a smaller, aggressive meat eater roamed as well. The Diplodocus actually did not mind the addition of more forestry for the Brachiosaurus, as they enjoyed the shade it offered them. And then it was already time for the park's next project. Ever since the opening, fans and customers had been begging for one particular species of dinosaurs, and with the park now home to multiple carnivores without big incidents involving humans, it was time to welcome the Velociraptor. Though the long neck herbivores were so popular, the raptors would be a really prime A star attraction. It was interesting seeing how the raptors were smaller than some of the existing carnivores, but yet they were a fan favorite ever since the files in the first Jurassic Park were released publicly. And then, the first of the three raptors was set loose. The utmost precaution would be necessary in its transport, as it was notorious that one of the staff members was killed by a raptor when moving it to its pen in the first Jurassic Park. But it had some of Kanoa's staff worried. The fences of the raptor pen were regular fences, not even electrified. If the beast managed to attack a weak spot, they would be able to break out in no time. But Kanoa believed his part was built to the dinosaur's liking, and thus they had nothing to worry about. He wanted the crowds to properly see the dinosaurs, and therefore refrained from larger fences with electricity. But the raptors were no ordinary dinosaurs. They were the smartest creatures in the park. Once the first raptor was set loose, it seemed well aware the helicopters above her, transporting her fellow group members. Once more were dropped off, one of them immediately went in for the kill on one of the goats. You could see in their eyes that these were animals that could think, could calculate. They communicated with each other, and as the visitors stared them in the eyes, they stared right back at them. You could see she was a clever girl. Visitors staying in the hotel had a nice view of the newest raptor attraction. But of course, the park never stood still, and Kunoa was excited about their next planned event. It was another large pen to welcome one large dinosaur. In fact, 
It was meant for the king of the dinosaurs. The majestic Tyrannosaurus rex. Though some of the scientists believed that the T-Rex could live with the long neck herbivores, Kanoa was of the opinion that the rex would deserve its own pen. As it stomped out in the open, even the scientists and staff could not believe their eyes. They had never seen such a large and dangerous animal before. Its roar mighty and stern. Like all others, it was tranquilized and made ready for transport. The queues to get but a glimpse of the latest edition rose up to four and five hours as everyone wanted to be part of this historic day. The T-Rex explored its pen and found it to its liking. The Rex was one hell of a beauty with bright yellow eyes and its strong legs shaking the ground wherever it went. Here too, staff members expressed their concerns with the tiny unelectrified fences, but Kanoa told them not to worry. As long as the Rex was at ease, they had nothing to worry about. In fact, it seemed quite occupied by seeing that delicious goat and gobbling it up in one go. Some of the customers were a bit scared to see such a predator up close, but it quickly became a popular sight for everyone to visit. But then something terrible happened. During feeding hour of the raptors, staff members let out more goats for the raptors to hunt and feed on. Though this went well for the first couple of goats, one of the raptors had snuck up and rammed the stand that a staff member was standing on to be out of reach of the raptors. The staff members lost his balance and fell in the pen with the raptors. The alarm was raised as rangers rushed towards the raptor pen and the visitors could only watch in awe. Some pulled out their phones to film. They all witnessed how the helpless man laid on the ground as the raptors closed in on him and tore him to shreds. After the raptor incident with the feeder a few months back, some were worried that the park would close. But the fact that incidents regarding staff members have occurred before, like with SeaWorld and the killer whale, Konoa was in luck that all it took was a large sum of money for the family of the deceased staff. If a guest had been eaten, things could have gotten a lot worse. Nevertheless, some were worried about visiting the park, and to ensure guest numbers to rise again, Kanoa had one of his scientists prepare something special. But before this could be realized, more time was needed, and in the meantime, a new pen was built for a new herbivore. The cute Stericosaurus would be the latest addition to the park. Another dinosaur that people compared to the likes of the Triceratops. While the new dinosaurs were incubated, the audience could still enjoy the sightings of so many different dinosaurs and species. As the raptor incident was slowly forgotten about, guest numbers started to rise again as everyone was in awe from seeing the giant beasts. Then finally, the Stericosaurus was released. It only had one horn on its nose, but had several spikes on its beautiful crown. It was a bit smaller than a Triceratops, and therefore required multiple ones to live together as well. Their horns were quite long though, so they felt confident about defending themselves. To compensate for the rise in number of guests, another hotel was built at the other edge of the park. This would be a more budget type of hotel, for guests whose capital was not that much. Then the first steps were taken on the big surprise that Kanoa and his scientists had in store for the people. A very large pen was built, with outlook posts on either side 
and large areas for people to watch on the side. It resembled an arena, and a divide was made right down the middle. It was publicly announced that the park would host dinosaur gladiator style matches, where two carnivores would fight each other to the death. It would be great for guest number increases, as people were excited about the spectacle. The Styracosaurus, that had only been there for a month, had soon lost their shine in the spotlight. For the first battle that was going to be held, Kanoa insisted on smaller scale carnivores to test out the waters. For this, the new Suchomimus was introduced, a fierce looking predator with a very narrow snout. To speed things up, a monorail was built through the park to let guests travel quickly to the place where they could see the dinosaur fights or more high priority dinosaurs like the T-Rex. And then, the first combatants were airlifted towards the arena. Blood would soon be spilled. The pen offered no water, food or shelter. It was purely made for battle. The dinosaurs were visibly stressed out, something that did not sit well with several animal rights activists all over the world. But pro supporters argued that the stress would only last a few hours as soon the fence between the two dinosaurs was removed. The Suchomimus and her opponent, the Baryonyx, an earlier introduced dinosaur, albeit that this one was incubated anew solely for the gladiator fight. The two dinosaurs stood head to head and bared their teeth at one another as soon flesh and skin were ripped off bone and screeches of pain filled the air. The audience loved it. Filming was allowed and videos taken on people's phones went viral all over the world. Never before had they seen anything like this. Eventually the Suchomimus was victorious with the Baryonyx succumbing to her wounds. Before heading to a bigger caliber dinosaur, another small scale gladiator match was being prepared. This time, another new dinosaur was introduced. The small critter known as the Deinonychus. It would face off against the fan favorite, a Velociraptor. The crowds went wild when the announcement went public. Many went to see the combat live, and some even had brought signs to cheer on the raptor. Not many were cheering in the camp of the Deinonychus. The fin on her head and the bright color did not make her look very imposing or dangerous. The pen was so wide that when the fence was removed, it actually took a few minutes before the two dinosaurs had even noticed each other. But once they did notice, combat was full on. They looked at each other carefully. Attacks were quick and brief both were turning into a defensive position quickly after. The battle was in the end not as spectacular as the one before and people asked for larger scale combat soon. To everyone's surprise though, it was the Deinonychus who came out on top. The next battle would be a huge attraction. The giant T-Rex would finally see some action. Something everyone had wished for. There was a little hiccup though, as the incubated Rex was released too early and temporarily shared its incubation pen with a Stegosaurus scheduled for release that week. Before the rangers could sedate the rex, the damage had already been done. 
In a way, it was another gladiator match happening. Only this was not for the public eye. A new Rex would be prepared for the match, and its enemy would be the Spinosaurus. The only good thing to come out of the awful Jurassic Park 3 movie. Its large fin and scary face made this creature resemble the scarier one to many. When both combatants were escorted, queues of up to five hours stood to get by the glimpse of the bloodshed. It was even televised live for people to see all over the world. Many cheered for the T-Rex, though the Spinosaurus did have her share of fans too. The battle was all the people could ask for. The two giants stormed at one another. Their ear-deafening roars caused trembles as tons of mass clashed with each other. They bit into one another multiple times. Blood was everywhere. It was an even match with both dinosaurs getting good hits in. The crowd went wild, and in the end, it was the T-Rex that was victorious, as it finished off its opponent with an enormous crack of the skull. The guests were satisfied, but Kanoa had one more trick up his sleeve. It was announced that the winner of this battle would face a new kind of dinosaur, an artificially bred one known as the Indominus Rex. With the Spinosaurus defeated in the life or death duel, it was time to introduce the audience to the next contender fighting the victorious T-Rex. The Indominus Rex a hybrid of several dinosaurs and animal species would surely be right for that task and though the audience was a little confused at first as what to expect the hype surrounding the fight grew with each day as the Tyrannosaurus was sedated for recovery the Irex was already transported towards the fighting pen for visitors to view and see walking around Its bright white color and spikes made the Indominus quite the monster to behold. Its body was more athletically built than the T-Rex and it did have longer arms. Statistics showed that the Irex had an advantage over its upcoming nemesis. When the T-Rex had been fully recovered, it was set loose again, smelling in the air that a new combatant was in town. The Rex was transported the very next day, and as it was lifted into the pen, the Indominus Rex seemed very aware of what was happening opposite of her. The T-Rex seemed to understand too, as it was surrounded by familiar smells. Its large fan base had assembled once again, bringing boards and signs to show their support in the audience. 
The IREX showcased signs of great intelligence, and its cool look sat well with some of the youth who cheered it on. Once the fence separating the two was removed, it did not take long before they noticed the opening and ran to one another. The battle was about to begin. The fight was once again televised live to audience all over the world. It was the park's way of keeping it up to date and viral as new dinosaurs were being bred. The Indominus Rex showed great skill and power in the first part of the battle as it was able to draw first blood. The fight was tense and not necessarily as action-packed as some had hoped. The two monsters realized both of them had the power to kill one another, and the champion and challenger made sure to look for any rare opening. But to some people's surprise, but also many people's relief, it was the reigning champion, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, that was victorious by killing the hybrid in a brutal fashion. The T-Rex stood as the victor, but was wounded and stressed out. The sirens proclaiming its victory going off throughout the park also did not help with this. It were all these small things that led up to that dreadful moment. To that moment that had been telegraphed and warned about by Konoha scientists all along. Where people could enjoy the park in peace that was about to come to an end. Maybe it was karma for once again delving into the role of God after previous dinosaur parks had proved to be a grave mistake. Or it was redemption for the brutal and cruel display of the dinosaur fights, angering many who opposed this. Whatever the reason would be, people would look back at this day as the day where it all turned into a bloodbath. With the T-Rex being victorious, its stress levels had peaked to where it lost self-control. It was still in fighting mode and with no opponent in the pen, it attacked the flimsy fence, a danger many of the scientists had warned about. The king of the dinosaurs was loose and people screamed and ran from the tyrant, but not all could get away. The noise in the ruckus over at the fighting pen was so loud that it stressed out other dinosaurs in nearby pens as well. The presumed peaceful Stegosaurus showcased similar behavior as it attacked the fence to escape to freedom. As the alarm was raised for the people to seek shelter, the T-Rex was rampaging throughout the park stomping on multiple guests who met an early death. It was absolute chaos. More dinosaurs escaped and the monorail leading away from the park was too small to carry all the thousands of guests of the island immediately. Multiple types of dinosaurs intermingled within the park as they ran, stomped, or snuck their way looking for their next human snack. But it was not just humans who got confronted, as sometimes two rivaling dinosaurs also crossed paths. People were screaming and crying everywhere as the smaller types, like the Velociraptor, 
also hunted some of the humans down who were cornered. Some of the rangers headed into the park to sedate the dinosaurs, but the situation was already too far gone, with another dinosaur behind each corner they passed. The staff currently at the park tried their best to help the guests, but they had their own problems back at their staff facility. Besides a giant Spinosaurus laying waste to people, other smaller creatures took their vengeance on the park rangers and scientists as well. Even the twin of the Indominus Rex could pry itself loose and literally meet its maker to devour them. In a way, there was something poetic about the deaths of the scientists. By that, of which they helped to create. There were those running into the destroyed pens, finding themselves lost or eaten. Some people got it bad, who fell prey to the tiny Dilephosaurus. The main shopping street had turned into a mess of humans, body parts and roaming dinosaurs. Some of the dinosaurs showcased signs of confusion within the chaos. Some fought, some ran frantically, stopping more people to death, and others continued to eat the guests. Death for some of the dinosaurs came in the form of losing a duel against another carnivore. There was just nowhere to run for the people. The buildings were already filled to the brink with frightened guests, and the rest fell victim to the jaws, claws and paws of the giant monsters. With the park crumbling by the minute, Kanoa made sure to evacuate his most important staff members and lawyers on the island. The victim total crept into the hundreds, and this could prove to be a very expensive set of lawsuits on the rise, so he better lawyered up. Footage from a ranger helicopter gave a good glimpse of the desperate situation as families were separated and individuals ran for their lives as the park was taken over by the creatures. There was no saving it, and some of the staff members simply abandoned their posts and used the staff vehicles to quickly save themselves.
slowly, it became more quiet in the park, except for the few people who were still outside with the stomping and fighting dinosaurs. The last of the people were being eaten or stomped on, as a sense of calm slowly returned to some parts of the park. The herbivores explored their newly expanded home with curious eyes, inspecting the human architecture with wonder. Kanoa's Jurassic Park was done for. He was confident, though, that someday he would make a new and even better park, as the past had showcased that people like Hammond could always come out on top again after a disaster that occurred before. This island and this park now belonged to the dinosaurs, and was a harsh lesson for man who seems to never learn. Hey everybody, and thank you for watching and supporting this unique Jurassic Park series I did. Though this is the finale of this miniseries, I might return to this setting in the future with a new miniseries as DLC was promised to add water creatures or maybe even flying creatures. I could also do a storyline about the dinosaurs roaming free on the island, etc. But that will be for the future. I think this series was a good taste of how I'm going to do most future narrative series in this sense that they will not be a series that consists of 20 or 30 episodes, but rather a bit more compact into 4, 5 or 6 episodes. Even so, this series did not get the numbers like series like Hearts of Iron narratives or Star Wars, and I'm afraid that most of my fans just like more military stuff, which is a bit of a shame because I think I'm capable of making narrative series for all kinds of games and settings. Nevertheless, I am very proud of this series, as I envisioned it like this from the moment it got recommended by a viewer before the game was even first released. I would first start with a few episodes where everything was nice and we got some cool close-ups of the dinosaurs. Then, things would slowly start to escalate, with the final episode being this dinosaur feeding frenzy. Anyway, with this series now coming to a close, I will soon start another narrative series, so I hope to see you all then. Thank you.